constructive. Yes. Mm -hmm. The assumed or inferred by legal interpretation. Yeah. <coughs> Used to describe an act or condition that is not the thing named. Ah but that acquires the character of the thing named because of the way it is regarded by the law. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. a landlord's failure to maintain a tenant's apartment yep, in living conditions would constitute constructive eviction of the tenant, see section 274. <laughs> now, uh, yesterday, pooch, mm -hmm. I mentioned that abuse of power of Mike Van Proyen as the pastor. Yes, mm -hmm. You know, I like to talk to Marilyn because as I remember it, I told Mike, yes, uh huh, uh, there had been no hot water for approximately uh, nine days. Yes. Before I received a check that uh, my grandmother had sent me. Yep. That Marilyn, that Marilyn cashed for me in their personal bank account. Pooch. <laughs> now let's say there's no hot water. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then let's say you turn the electricity off in the middle of winter. Yes. The constructive mm -hmm, would constitute constructive eviction. Yes. Because of the unlivable conditions of the fifth wheel at the time of turning the electricity off. Now, I did tell both Mike and JR there's no hot water. Yes. I haven't been able to shower in nine days. Yes. I had no money. Yes. And I needed to wash my clothes because I didn't have any underwear on. Now, I did tell Marilyn that it was best that I didn't go out that day mm -hmm. because I didn't want to be walking around uh, in town or going to banks without any underwear on. No, though I do it every day now, but it's no big deal. <laughs> now, let's look at the constructive mm -hmm, contempt of court. <clears throat> constructive contempt usually refers to the failure or refusal to obey a lawful order, ah, injunction or court decree, see section 96. <laughs> Well, let's see. <laughs> Constructive contempt would be the refusal to admit the stipulation and order when motioning the court for a petition for dissolution of marriage. Yeah. That would be constructive contempt. <laughs> constructive contempt of the Superior Court of Guam. Let's go ahead. <laughs> now I'm wanting to make some laws. <laughs> now it would be constructive contempt uh, to lie to the court. Yes. Yeah about exactly where we were married and what uh, the marriage certificate was uh, issued from. Yeah. See, there's numerous constructive contempts of court in both the protection orders that were issued <laughs> and, as well, yes, constructive contempt of court in the dissolution of marriage. Ouch! Now, I took some pictures last night. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm really wanting to use that judicial system today. <laughs> See, there was this individual that kept uh, motioning the court. Yes, 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 Holmes versus Holmes, uh, Hillsborough County, North Superior Court docket, so on and so He appeared in court on behalf of clients. He was practicing law. Yes. But he was just helping them because the law allows for any person to help any person. Isn't that right? Right now. <laughs> now, uh, there exists in New Hampshire a strong public policy against the unauthorized practice of law. Yes. Yeah. The importance of preventing unqualified or unethical individuals from rendering legal services was recognized by the New Hampshire Supreme Court as early as 1851. Now, the importance of preventing unqualified or unethical individuals from rendering legal services to themselves, to the five minors named, or the respondent by the law that was recognized by the New Hampshire Supreme Court as early as 1851. <clears throat> now, let's think about this strong public policy. Yes. If New Hampshire Supreme Court back in 1851 found it important to prevent the unqualified and unethical <laughs> constructive contempt of court of an individual, what the hell, what the hell?